Hey everyone, welcome back to another gaming news recap. This week we got the reveal of Dragon's Dogma 2. I cannot believe it. I am super pumped that this is actually a thing. We also saw some extended gameplay of this crazy dino hunting game called Exo Primal. This looks over the top in potentially an awesome kind of way. We'll see. Blizzard also came out and laid out their plans for Overwatch 2. Some real nice surprises here, including the removal of loot boxes. Also, Fallout 5 is probably 10 years away, just so you know. God of War Ragnarok rock is rumored to still come out this fall and final fantasy 7 fans got a ton of really great news on top of that we'll be doing a quick recap of this summer's e3 replacement events there's a lot of these and a lot of games to go over before we start jumping into the top stories though let's get a quick word from today's sponsor today's video is sponsored once again by the ridge wallet these are the hardy compact wallets designed to streamline what you carry around bringing it down to the essentials personally since i've been using a ridge wallet for almost a a year now I've gone down to just carrying my ID bank card credit card and a couple of membership cards and that's it if you do happen to have a lot of cards that you feel like you do need on a regular basis they say that Ridge wallets can hold up to 12 while still also having room for cash these are offered in over 30 different colors and styles they're made of durable materials and have over 40,000 five-star reviews also come with a 45 day risk-free trial on top of a lifetime warranty if there's anything you don't like about it you're pretty much covered. If you are interested in checking out Ridge Wallet for yourself, head on over to ridge.com slash force or use the link in the description below. And using code force at checkout will get you 10% off your order. Okay, so kicking things off this week, Dragon's Dogma 2 was officially announced, which is probably the most exciting story for me of the entire week. Now the original, which is somewhat of a cult classic, is an open world RPG with action combat, tons of depth, and a lot of really cool features. In particular, this rather unique system of pawns, which while they are basically just kind of AI companions, they're also a whole lot more with how they were implemented into the game and the different things they're capable of. It's just a really interesting system. But in general, yeah, Dragon's Dogma is a beloved game, and it is great that after nearly 10 years, we are finally getting a sequel. Now, this was revealed during a special live stream that was celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the original, and in it, the game's creators discussed things like how Dragon's Dogma came to be, recalling their early exposure to high fantasy through classic pen and paper games, and how this led to their love of RPGs in general, and ended up crafting their own fantasy world, which eventually became what we know as Dragon's Dogma. Now, as for the sequel, specifics at this point are quite vague. In fact, they're basically non-existent. We just know that the game is in development and that it will be running on RE Engine. This is Capcom's engine, originally designed for Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Hazard. And also, this was used for Resident Evil Village, Monster Hunter Rise, Street Fighter VI, and a handful of other Capcom games. Now, since we haven't even gotten a release year, I would not hold my breath on getting to play Dragon's Dogma 2 anytime soon. Maybe 2024 or 25, we'll see. But honestly, at least we know this is happening. For me, that's good enough at this point. I really liked the first Dragon's Dogma. It was such a unique way to do an open world action RPG game. If you haven't played it, I suggest it. I think it was like last I looked, you could get it for like five or 10 bucks on Steam. I think it's well worth it. If you can deal with the fact that it's a 10 year old game, it's a really good game. We got a new gameplay trailer and some details for Capcom's upcoming dinosaur hunting game, Exo Primal. The trailer was ridiculous, but in a good way, I think. Uh, we saw things like hordes of thousands of raptors tripping over each other as they try to chase you and your team down, pterodactyls swarming and crashing planes. Pretty sure I saw a dinosaur tornado at one point. And then this game also features these black holes in the sky that just swarms of dinosaurs fall out of. It's all kind of crazy and over the top. Uh, so some details about the game itself, they say that Exo Primal is an online team-based action game where players pilot powerful exosuits, each with their own different roles, so these will be like classes, and they use these to face off against never-ending hordes of dinosaurs. However, it's not just about trying to survive against hordes of dinosaurs, that is one of the main focuses, but also this is a PvPVE game, so two teams of five players will be dealing with the dinosaurs and also competing against other players. You'll be transported to various locations where these dino outbreaks are taking place, and then working to complete a series of objectives, the first team to finish is the one who wins. 
wins. So you can either engage with the other team directly or even fight alongside them to take out like a big dangerous threat. It's going to be this interesting balance and back and forth, but all the while your team is trying to complete the task quicker than the other. It's kind of an interesting concept. I'm not exactly sold yet on this mix because I know PvP VE games can be really hard to balance and really hard to get right, but the core, the basis of this game of like ridiculous overwhelming numbers of dinosaurs tripping over each other and you've got these exosuits, like that aspect of it I think is really cool. I guess I'm just not sold and sure whether or not they'll be able to pull off the PvP side. And I love PvP in pretty much any game, so it's not the existence of PvP that, that I'm not sure of, it's just whether or not they can get that balance because yeah, it is a really hard balance to strike. It's been made pretty clear to me in recent years that PvPVE is a difficult combination to do properly. We'll be finding out more soon. They, I do expect to see some more gameplay and information in the coming months and this game will be releasing at some point in 2023. We got some big updates this week for Overwatch 2. As part of a reveal event, we learned that it will be fully free to play, is going to include a season battle pass, kind of following along the lines of what has become standard for live service games, which yes, they are now billing Overwatch 2 as a live service title. They have in fact also removed loot boxes in favor of direct purchases. We got the reveal of the new tank hero, the Junker Queen. They say they've reimagined PvP, so the new game mode is going to be 5 versus 5 and will include new as well as reworked heroes. Apparently they are reworking a large number of the heroes in the game. And the seasons that they're talking about will be on these 9 week rotations and will include things like new skins, maps, and new heroes. In fact, they even went as far as to give us a roadmap for the first handful of seasons. So season one, which begins on October 4th, will include three new heroes, six new maps, over 30 skins, the new battle pass system, mythic skins, as well as a new game mode. And then season two will be beginning on December the 6th. We'll come with one new hero, one new map, 30 more skins. Of course, they get the, they got plenty of skins. They got one map, but they got a lot of skins. A uh, new battle pass, as well as a new mythic skin. And they plan, apparently, to continue this pace into 2023 and beyond. Speaking of which, the PvE content, which was supposed to be originally one of the big selling points of Overwatch 2, that'll be coming at some time in 2023. I didn't see a specific exact window. Really interesting. I mean, this is a lot more change than they originally announced for Overwatch 2. It's a lot more change than I expected them to announce for Overwatch 2. I do think overall this is a step in a good direction. I think these are some really cool things that they're talking about. Going fully free to play. I think removing loot boxes is fantastic. That does, they're not, again, they're not removing monetization. They're just removing the random nature to the monetization of cosmetics. And I am at this point uh, fully on board with that. I just, times in the past, I've engaged with loot box systems and I've kind of written them off because, oh, it's just cosmetic. But I'm definitely at the point where I just think it's garbage. I think games should not have them. We shouldn't be paying money for a randomized chance of things. If you want to sell cosmetics, sell cosmetics, give it a set price. Don't have me rolling the dice so I keep spending more and more. It's cool that they're removing loot boxes. That doesn't mean that monetization goes out the window because it's free to play. There'll be plenty of things to spend money on and I bet these skins are probably going to be pretty darn expensive, but that's just how this game works. That's how free to play monetization tends to work. And as we've seen with Blizzard, they will monetize as much as they can nowadays. But anyways, lots of stuff for Overwatch 2. Overall, it, I think it's a fairly positive thing. I don't know that it's bringing me back into the game necessarily. I'm not particularly interested. I don't know if I want to spend time this fall playing Overwatch 2 as opposed to any of the other games that are coming or that I still haven't played that I want to play, but it's a good thing for people who do want to play Overwatch. So early access will be beginning at the start of the first season, which again is on October 4th. And I do believe that they will be doing some testing prior to that as well, which you can register for on their website. This next story isn't exactly surprising news, but here we go. We did get official confirmation this week that Fallout 5 will not be coming until after The Elder Scrolls 6. Not surprising, we pretty much knew this. What's interesting though is if you didn't know, The Elder Scrolls 6 we learned recently is still in pre-production. They haven't even started full production and that will likely not be happening until after Starfield launches, which is happening sometime next year. But even then, who knows? I mean, The Elder Scrolls 6 might not start full production until a year or two from now, I guess depending on how much post-launch support Starfield will be getting and how much of their development team will be dedicated and focused on that. All of which to say, Fallout 5 probably won't be launching until 2035. It sounds like a joke, but think about it. 
Think about it. Starfield's out next year. Full production of The Elder Scrolls 6 starts next year, maybe the following year. What, that's going to take at least five or six years, maybe? And then production of the next Fallout game is going to start? It's just a long ways away. I'm actually kind of hoping, though, that with uh, this acquisition by Microsoft, maybe this injection of cash that they'll be getting from this will allow them to have the resources to develop multiple games simultaneously. That really hasn't been Bethesda's thing up until this point, but maybe that is one of the potential upsides to this Microsoft. Microsoft acquisition. We'll have to see. But either way, yeah, if you're looking forward to a new Fallout game, uh, you're going to be stuck with uh, 76 for quite, quite some time. We got some rumors quite recently that the next God of War game, Ragnarok, will still be planned for this year. There was some concern that that was not going to happen, especially since we hadn't heard any updates on the game. But looks like it might be coming in November. These rumors state, which come from three separate sources familiar with the game's development, apparently, that it will be launching in November. And not only that, but that they will be giving the official release date sometime later this month. It is a bit surprising though, because you know, they didn't say anything about Ragnarok at State of Play, which was only a few weeks ago. But then also they didn't make any announcements at any one of the numerous summer game show events. We've had a ton of events over the course of this past like week and a half and no word about Ragnarok then. Although I do kind of get the idea that maybe they just wanted to dodge that deluge of news and announcements to try to stand out a bit more. So if they uh, make an announcement in a week or two from now. That makes a lot of sense as well. Either way, hopefully we will be learning more soon. I am certain that Sony is really pushing to make this happen, a 2022 launch, especially given how little Microsoft has to show on the Xbox exclusive front for the rest of this year. Microsoft has a strong 2023 planned for sure. We learned that from their event, but this holiday season is kind of wide open. So if Sony could release that God of War game, I'm sure it would do very, very well. Obviously though, we only want it to come out if it's actually finished and ready to ship. Final Fantasy fans got a metric ton of exciting news this week, or so I am told. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is the second game in the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy. Side note, we, it's now confirmed it will be a trilogy, so three games. This will be launching next winter on the PS5, so sometime early 2023. That's the next winter window. No word yet, by the way, of a PC release date. We're assuming that'll happen sometime after. Then there was also Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII Reunion. We got an announcement trailer for that. That is a new version with enhanced graphics, HD updates, brand new 3D models, and a whole bunch of stuff coming. Then beyond those announcements, there was also Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade launching on Steam. It's available right now. And then we also got a trailer for Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. That is a whole lot of Final Fantasy in a single week. That's a whole lot of Final Fantasy VII in a single week. I will admit I am woefully uneducated on this topic. Just don't know much about the franchise at all. But from what I hear, fans of Final Fantasy are tickled with all of this news. And you know what? I'm so happy that you guys are happy. That's pretty exciting. Moving on, do you remember Bitcraft? This is that sandbox MMO that is said to have a big focus on community building, as well as also catering to some non-combat play styles, things like farming, hunting, and crafting, city building, and social strategy. Well, since the game was revealed last September, updates have been kind of light, barring a few blog posts. But recently, we just learned that the developer raised $22 million in funding for the game. So this is a good sign in my eyes that production should be in full swing. This money will be going not only towards development of the game, but also to this database technology that the game will be utilizing. Also, I want to point out that they did start pre-alpha testing for Bitcraft last year, shortly after the game was revealed and they will be planning to kick off full alpha testing sometime soon. I quite like the look of Bitcraft from the initial reveal trailer. I thought it had a charming appeal. Obviously though, we know close to nothing about the game beyond some like basic broad topics. So I'm hopeful we see some actual gameplay in the coming months, although it might still be too early because yeah, they are just starting alpha testing. Either way, it's a new MMO that I'm keen to learn more about. Oh, this is super exciting too. I wanted to let you know that Valheim will be coming to PC Game Pass this fall, as well as Xbox Game Pass in spring 2023. This is amazing news. Hands down, one of my favorite games that I've played in the past couple years. Uh, I was obsessed with this thing when it first hit Steam Early Access. I played it for like two weeks straight. I had a blast. I did put it down after that time. You know, I kind of moved on, I guess somewhat quickly in the grand scheme of things, but still I think I got like 80 to 100 hours and for the, what, $20 that I spent, it was a great investment. So the fact that this is coming to Game Pass, I gotta say, if you like Survival crafting games, if you're into like this North mythological setting at all, if you like any of that, you should absolutely try out Valheim. It is a really, really great experience. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I cannot say 
it enough. Okay, so last week we covered Jeff Keighley's uh, Summer Games Fest as well as the Devolver Digital events, and there was a lot of news and announcements from both of those things, but since then, we've got three additional events with even more stuff. There was the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase, the PC Gaming Show, and the Future Game Shows. Now, between all of these, there's somewhere around like 100 games that were either revealed or announced or had some sort of coverage. It is just a lot, an overwhelming number of things to do, but I'm not going to touch on everything, but I do want to focus on some of the best and most interesting looking stuff that I personally really, really liked and I want to let you know about. Most of which came from the Xbox and Bethesda showcase. This was probably my favorite of all of these summer game events that have happened in this past couple of weeks. Okay, so talking about the games. First off, of course, we have to mention Starfield. We got an extensive first look, a good chunk of gameplay showing off various systems and stuff. This was from an early portion of the game, they said, when you first arrive on one of the moon I believe it was the moon of Crete. So we see the ship coming in from space with this wide panoramic shot. And then the ship lands. We got first person view. There's a robot companion in front of you. And then you go out onto the planet and we see a bunch of stuff happen. We see them scanning for resources, learning about different things, picking up stuff. We see a little bit of combat. We see the third person toggle, different uh, animal life. There was a lot of like the, the different features and stuff of the game showcased. And all in all, like checking out the different systems, interacting with different NPCs, visiting different places the space combat, the planet side combat, like things looked cool, but boy, oh boy, did performance look just abysmal in a lot of ways. So much so that it was very distracting watching the trailer and it was not just the stream. It's not like the stream quality messed with the bit rate and that was the issue. No, no, it was quite clearly massive frame drops all throughout the gameplay showcase. And what's interesting to note too is this is what they chose to show. Like this is presumably the good stuff. This is like the best footage that they could get that they pieced together this trailer with and it had some massive rough patches. Now, obviously they delayed Starfield, right? So part of that is to work on things like performance, but boy, the fact that this was like their highlight and it had so many issues, it does leave me a little bit concerned for sure. Now, the thing is though, Bethesda games aren't exactly known for their technical prowess and performance has been a repeated issue with Bethesda titles. And a lot of times that kind of gets pushed to the wayside because the worlds with the scale and the interest intricacies and the interactivity and everything, they deliver a very unique experience. There are really very few, if there are even any developers who make games exactly like Bethesda games. And whether or not you like that, there's clearly a huge audience for it. And I count myself in them. Skyrim, one of my all time favorite games, hands down. And I also love the previous Elder Scrolls titles, Morrowind and, and Oblivion. And you know, the, the ones before, we don't talk about those. <laughs> but, but you know, I like Bethesda games, even with all of their jank, but I was certainly distracted by the amount of performance issues we saw. So fingers crossed that all gets shored up before the thing finally comes out next year, which yes, it'll be coming out in 2023. Another big title we got to look at at this event was Diablo 4. We got some brand new updated footage, which showed off a ton of stuff. Look at the classes, different bits of combat. We saw the mountain action. They went over various aspects of the game, kind of just an overview, talking about the seamless open world where you go between experiencing different open world events, going into towns, seeing other people because it's a shared open world kind of MMO light, the fact that there are open world bosses and hundreds of dungeons for you to do, a non-linear story campaign, PvP specific zones where you can fight other players and good players get marked as like champions that people will try to hunt down. And then they briefly touched on that they will have a, this rich end game with the Paragon board, new items, new dungeons, and new content to experience. All of it sounds really good. However, as I went into detail in my most recent video prior to this, there are many, many things that have me concerned about Diablo 4 with Blizzard recent track record, how they support games, how they've been monetizing games. And no, I'm not just talking about Immortal because I don't think D4 will have exactly Immortal's monetization. But across the board, Blizzard's kind of been pushing the line with a lot of this stuff and it does leave me worried. And none of that is even talking about how fleshed out D4 will be. But I don't want to rehash that stuff here. If you guys are interested in hearing more, go check out that recent video. And moving on to the next game from the Xbox Bethesda showcase that I really liked. It's Redfall. This is a open world vampire hunting game from the team that made Dishonored. And I think it looks really good. I really liked this trailer. You're going around hunting different vampires. There are classes with different abilities. There'll be progression and loot to hunt. And I really liked it, but boy, it seems like nobody else did. This is like one of those games. It's very, it's a very much a force game where I'm like, I think that's cool. I would play that. I like what I see. And then I go on the internet and everyone's like, this looks shit. And I'm just like, 
don't know what to do. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I thought this looked pretty interesting. I did, and um, I'm excited to learn more. I am. A few other things from this event that I want to touch on. First of all, we got a new gameplay trailer for Plague Tale Requiem. I think this looked awesome. Really excited about this. Something that took me by surprise was Minecraft Legends. This is an action strategy game. Do you remember Cube World? This looks like Cube World, but Minecraft, okay. Lightyear Frontier, no, this is not a Toy Story game. This is an open world farming adventure game where you must start a new home on a distant planet, farming alien crops, building up a homestead and exploring the wilderness. This game features these mech suits. You gather resources, build stuff up. You can farm things, you gather animals. You can customize your mech, call in supplies, uh, explore the world. It looks pretty cool. It's also got multiplayer in it. This was like, it's supposed to be just like this chill uh, survival exploration farming adventure game. I don't know. Sounds kind of cool. Araban Shadow Legacy. This is said to be a fast-paced stealth platformer. It takes place in this future kind of dark cyberpunk world full of these dangerous robots. You play as the sh character who lives amongst the shadows hunting down the robots. It's a basically a third-person stealth game, and this looks pretty neat. Set for release in 2023. Cocoon is a new game from the creator of Limbo, a top-down adventure game with puzzle solving. You move these orbs around and teleport to different areas coming in 2023. And then all also, um, there's a new Kojima game coming out. It, that's all we know. <laughs> they just said, hey, we're making a game, Hideo Kojima. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is, it is cool. It is cool. Now, that is just the tip of the iceberg, really. There were a lot more games from this event in particular. These are just kind of what made the top of my list. And what's most interesting about the Xbox and Bethesda game showcase is they said that every single game covered at the event is coming at some point in the next 12 months, which basically gives us the confirmed release windows for a lot of these things like Diablo 4 and Starfield and Redfall. They're all coming sometime between now and June 2023 really cool stuff. Okay, moving on to the next event we had was the Future Games Show. A couple of games I want to mention here. Outpost, which is a working title, is a first-person shooter where you collect resources, build and raise outposts or bases and various characters, and then you use these to tackle and take on more difficult maps and modes. This has a pretty cool kind of future, hard, edgy vibe to it. I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, Ludo is this first-person psychological horror that got revealed. There's another first-person horror game that goes by the the name of Ill that was also covered. Serial Cleaners is a single player stealth action game where you play as a team of cleaners for the mob going and picking up their mess. And then we also got a new trailer for Pow World. I don't know what to make of this thing. It's basically Pokemon, but with guns uh, as a third person shooter. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether I think this thing looks good or bad. I can't quite tell. Okay, so that's the big things from the future game show. And then finally, a uh, few games from the PC gaming show I want to mention. Solstice, this third person action game coming out on September 20th. Endless Dungeon is a roguelike tactical action game, which looked cool. And then also Deceive Inc., a multiplayer game of subterfuge, where, you know, it's kind of like a uh, find the bad guy sort of game. Okay, so that is a recap of all of this week's top stories, the E3 replacement events. Let's touch on some brand new releases and games that you can play right now. As I mentioned, the Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade launched on Steam, so that is now playable. We also saw the release of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. There's a demo up for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. I didn't know this was happening. That's pretty cool. A Starship Troopers Terran Command, that like old school RTS Starship Trooper game is launched. Update for Zenith, that VR MMO. Pretty massive update come out for the game. And then Red Out 2 is this classic inspired arcade racing game that also launched this week. And then finally, before we wrap up today, I do want to just let you know that the Steam Summer Sale is scheduled to start in a few days. It will begin on June 23rd and run until July 7th. As always, every year with the Steam sales, it's a great opportunity to get some new games at a pretty hefty discount. So keep your eye out for that in just a few days. And that'll pretty much do it for this week's news. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy the content and I will see you next week. Take it easy.